welcome to the Cemetery Gates podcast featuring Xander Kane and Android Virus. Welcome back to the Cemetery Gates podcast. It is me, Aaron, Android Virus, 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 Aaron, Virus, I don't know, one of those. You call me Aaron, whatever. And uh, I'm joined by my illustrious co-host, Mr. Xander King. How you doing, sir? Doing good, doing good. Glad to be back in the old podcasting chair after a chaotic January. Yes, 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 it was a chaotic January. It was was a very chaotic January. We had uh, some fun times. Some weird times. Me personally, yeah, you I was basically ran. Yeah, you basically ran a convention, apparently. Oh, the, yeah, the music, the film fest. Yeah, yeah that was uh, that was fun. That was that was fun. I am going to say that it was an experience, whether it be good or positive. It was an experience. And technically, I guess I helped program some of the short film festival. <laughs> you did. <laughs> you did. I was like, dude, send me some short films. You're like, all right, and then I sent to, to the guy who was supposed to be organizing it, and he, I said, "Hey, man, what do you think of these? Great, go with it." <laughs> I was like, "All right, <laughs> all right, here we go." <laughs> yeah, there were some good ones, by the way. Yeah, we, for sure, we, people really liked those, so that they're really cool. So thank you for that, man. No Although the the gentleman who did win the festival was a local guy who did a um, a local Star Wars film, uh, which is really cool. Sweet. So, and you know, the New Mexico desert is a perfect place for tattooing. Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> so, yeah, he did really good. And it, what was really sweet about it, he, he dedicated it to his son, his teenage son who passed away from cancer. So, you know, uh, it was it was really cool, man. So, cool. there you have it. Yeah, welcome back. It's good to hear your voice again, sir. Absolutely. My handsome, oh. devilish voice. Yeah, 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 your smooth, silky voice. Sound of the. Speaking of which, that's why we're doing. Sound of the '70s tonight or today we, or this morning. We are. I'll throw back to some '70s films. Yeah. Um, uh, pleasantly surprised, I would say. Of the yeah. value I got. Um, definitely For stoked. Sure. So, uh, what we're actually going to talk about a little later, uh, we did Dead of Night from 1974, Bob Clark film. And then also from the 70s, we did Sage Triangle from 1975. So, which I think was a TV movie. It was, man. We'll definitely yeah, get yeah, more yeah, into yeah. that. Yeah, we'll get to there in a bit. But, you know, For sure. that's what. That's what we're throwing down today. What you been watching, man? What have you seen? Dude, I actually went to the theater to check out the latest Jason Statham jaunt. The Beekeeper. <laughs> oh, we're supposed to go see that today. Uh, you know what? It's everything I expected it to be. It's a silly action Jason Statham film. Uh, there's some pretty cool moments in it. Nothing, you know groundbreaking obviously but it's what you would expect from a jason statham action flick and i I enjoyed it well enough it was a fun theater watch for me yeah that's cool man what did we we've been going to the theaters here and there um nothing too crazy i think uh because we have haven't talked since christmas time a little bit uh, or before christmas time um another another addition to the 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 android virus family so new grandson which is really fucking cool Uh, you know born christmas eve as i was here sick with covid it was great (laughs) so i watched some fun shit on the on the tubi (laughs) oh yeah yeah i I ended up watching um what was it uh uh phoenix the warrior and i watched uh sorceress not the one that we watched not the not the skinamax one um yeah phoenix the warrior is just a uh a uh, post-apocalyptic movie where men no longer exist. Yeah. And it's about <laughs> just women. And then, but which is weird is because the, the, the prize possession is semen. So they're all <laughs> fighting over semen and I don't know. 
because they want to make men in their own image again, and I, it's it's out there. But it's really cool. I mean, totally B B movie, low budget. B grade. Yeah, probably has some local strippers in it. Um, <laughs> definitely some Playboy playmates. Definitely some penthouse chicks just dressed in post apocalyptic gear, and really, really good blood blood bags on it, man. They they really nice. went there with the blood bags. So that was cool. And then Sorceress was a, another watch. Conan type of yeah yeah that's, yeah I like sorcerers yeah that's cool so yeah there's that man and then we uh, what else have I seen um, we watched some stuff at the con which I hadn't seen in a while uh I, which I hadn't seen I think since it came out was the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake yeah yeah it kind of it holds up man. I haven't revisited it in a while. I know I watched it after. I've seen it since the theater, um, but I don't remember under what context or if it was just kind of on in the background. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind revisiting it. It truly holds up, dude. It really does. It, it was funny because the kid that was doing our projection, his name's Johannes, and he had never seen it before. He's all, he, he's all of a tender age of twenty one, and so he got to sit through all these movies because he was running the projector. Yeah. And I was like, he's like, man, I'm a little, I feel a little dirty. <laughs> I was like, Damn, because, yeah. I was like, have you seen the original? He's like, no. I was like, oh, just you wait. <laughs> just you wait, buddy. Yeah. So he, he had, he's like, I had to go use the restroom and I was in there by myself in this giant convention center because we closed it down. And he was just peeing and one of the lights above him was just flickering and just a <laughs> slow drip of water in the sink. He's like, ah, oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> yeah. Good one, man. So, yeah. Yeah, um, what else have I checked out recently? I watched some horror movie that I can't. Yeah, remember. I did, um, while you think, uh, I did want to give a little plug for a little indie flick that's out now that I really enjoyed called Last Night at Terrace Lanes. Okay. Yeah, it's about uh, these kids have like a bowling alley in their town and it's about to get shut down. So they go there for like one last night of fun on the final night of opening and a cult kind of invades the space. So they're like, fending for their lives uh, from all these cult members. So it's like this kind of slasher that takes place in a bowling alley. Great gore. Uh, it's definitely a little low-budget indie flick, but, man, it's damn good fun across the board. So if you like low-budget indie stuff and, you know, in the slasher kind of style, Last Night at Terrace Lanes scratches that itch. And it's only oh, yeah. like – it's like not – it's like an hour and 70 – or wait, an hour and 15 minutes long. That's it. Super short, sweet and to the point. Unlike some of these other indie films, indie slasher films that like to make them two hours and ten minutes, I'm like nobody wants to watch a two hour and ten minute independent slasher film. No, they don't. Please clean all. up that. Please do. Yeah, nobody wants. Let's get to the point. Let's follow the formula. Which I mean, yeah, you could fuck with the formula, but let's you know. Yeah. What was it that uh, uh, Charles Band always said? Like the perfect horror movie was 87 to 89 minutes long. Yes, I agree there. Which I agree. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you have your opuses. Don't get me wrong. Like you got. Well, like for, for I think for slashers, that's a that's a solid rule to stand by. Perfect. It's around ninety, under ninety minutes is a perfect slasher. So. Yeah, I th I think so as well. Oh, I Tom watched. <clears throat> I watched um for the first time. My first time watched uh De Death Ship. Oh, it's been a minute since I've seen that, but I do remember that from like two thousand three ish. Maybe. Oh yeah, that, that one. Ghost, has ghost the, ship, ghost ship. Yeah, sorry. ghost ship. Yeah, that yeah, has the infamous ship. opening scene. Yeah, yeah. Had not seen it before. Definitely, yeah. Resident Evil vibes for sure. Yeah, for sure. Um, thirteen ghost type of vibes. Um, even I want to go as Event Horizon ish type of vibes, but kind of falls short of all of those. <laughs> so. I just remember the opening kill and the rest of the film not living up to that. Right, right. But they, I haven't really revisited it, so yeah, that's they, what I remember. They completely like, just yeah. yeah, they completely just gave the main course before, you know, and then th that was it. It was like the main course and then the rest was just like, oh, it's hors d'oeuvres. <laughs> you know, let's <laughs> let's hors d'oeuvre up to that point. But yeah, it was all right. It wasn't bad. I didn't hate it, you know, but I I also didn't Love like it. Either. Yeah, I, look, it's I got it on I got it done right. There you go. So there you have it. So yeah, man. So let's. What are we gonna do first? I know that we go switch, flip back and forth. It's been. Oh, uh, but... we'll do Death Dream or Dead of Night first. We'll do mine first this time. Hell yeah! Let's go ahead and listen to the trailer for Death Dream, aka Dead of Night. We'll be right back.
dead of night. The story of one night in a small town that changed the lives of many and ended the lives of some. Descended upon the town. Something corrupt. Unspeakable. Behind their drawn curtains they waited as fear walked in the dead of night. Soldier, where you headed? Come on, hop aboard. What does it say, Daddy? Dandy. Is that Andy? Joanne doesn't even know he's home yet. She'll be so surprised. But Andy wouldn't kill anybody? Due to the importance of the first five minutes of Dead of Night, audiences will not be seated after the beginning of the picture. All right, guys, that was the trailer for Death Dream, Dead of Night. Uh, we want to uh, let you know that this is the first installment of our Super 70 show. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> yes, and as previously stated, this gym is directed by Bob Clark. And if that name sounds familiar, well, it's the same Bob Clark from Black Christmas. Yeah. Yay. And what else? Oh, and a, to a, toy, a toy, was it? Christmas a Christmas story. story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Christmas story. Yeah, so I do think that Dead of Night is a better name for this movie than Death Dream. I don't like the Death Dream name uh, at all. I don't think it fits as well as Dead of Night. So I will refer to it as Dead of Night. For those I playing think so along. Too. <laughs> totally felt falls with it. Yeah, so this is starts off as a you get a scene out in Vietnam, which I don't think they actually say Vietnam. Just it's a just war. a war, but you put two and two together because they're talking about World War Two and then uh, the Korean War and all that other stuff. So you're like, okay, it's gotta be Vietnam. But they don't mm -hmm. actually ever say it. But anyways, you get some scenes of Vietnam and obviously bad shit happens to these soldiers and this particular guy, Andy some of his friends get blown up and he, you know, he, again, do you see him? He gets injured. Let me put yeah, that Yeah, he, he gets shot by a sniper. Yeah, he gets injured and that's kind of the end of that. 
and you know the scene ends and then you flash forward to his family and they're all at home you know having some sort of weird dinner <laughs> where the mom won't quit talking about the son yeah andy because they hadn't heard from him in a while and eventually during dinner one of the uh, military official comes to the house and is like hey here's your papers i'm sorry you know, let me know if I can do anything. And we figure out that the, the military has deemed him deceased. Dead. And the mom, you know, she's not buying it. She's just like, you know, typical mom. No, not true, not true, not true. She's just like going manic over this information. And then later that night at about three in the morning, their son shows up. And you're like, oh, okay. And then come to find out he had found a hitchhiker before this that got him to the home. And he wound up killing the hitchhiker. Or the hitchhiker comes up dead like the next day. Yeah. And, you know, the son is just acting weird and you don't really know what's going, if it's PTSD. Like we know he got hurt in Vietnam, but you don't really like see him die necessarily. Yeah. So it's just kind of like, okay, whatever. And so obviously he's adding, you know, he's just kind of acting weird the whole time with his sister, his mom, his dad. He eventually, this is so funny, to, well, not funny at all, but the fact that he's like sitting outside and his dad's like, I know what will shake him out of it. And he brings over like seven kids, seven little <laughs> shitty neighborhood kids. And I'm like, why the fuck would that make him happy? That seems like torture, but whatever. Yeah. And he gets kind of frustrated with the kids, but he doesn't really do anything because the dog's barking. So he winds up like picking up a dog and choking it out and killing it because it's barking. <laughs> so you're like, what the fuck? And at this point, you start to notice like our main character um, is starting to – like he's starting to look a little different, right? He's looking a little yeah. paler in color. Um, his skin's looking a little flaky. His eyes are looking just a little different, and you're not really sure what's happening to him or what's going on. And eventually, like pieces of his flesh start like falling off. You're like, oh, okay, so he is. He something's not right here. <laughs> he's not really alive. And then you find out he runs into a doctor, and he shows the doctor he has no heartbeat. Um, and he's got no, you know, he's got no vitals. And the doctor found out about uh, the truck driver that passed away, and he's like, "Oh!" And, there, and the only clue, that, yeah, the only thing they got out of the people was like, "Yeah, he said he picked up a hitchhiker that was former military." <laughs> so the doctor's like, "I have to tell the police your son is former military," and that was the last person that was seen with this, you know, truck driver that got his throat, throat slit was, you know, he picked up a hitchhiker that was from the military. So he's like, "I have to tell, I have to tell." Um, so he does, and that's why. He eventually goes over and kills the doctor himself, who stabs him quite profusely with a, a needle. And then he extracts blood from the yeah. doctor. So he's trying to, like, fix himself. So it, at this point in the film, you're thinking, okay, so in order for him not to peel and rot away, he's got to, like, drain, blood. you know, fresh blood and inject it. And you see him get a little bit better after that particular scene, but then it just kind of gets to a point where it's, Worse, it gets worse, and worse, and worse, and like the finally the dad is like, oh, okay, we got to kill him. This is something's not right. You know, it feels like Pet Cemetery vibes. But obviously, the mom is very protective. His sister tries to set him back up with his girl he was dating beforehand, and you know he tries to eat her <laughs> at the drive-in. <laughs> and then the movie just kind of carries on. Uh, mom's you know flailing, losing her mind. She's trying to protect a son. And it just kind of ends in like a really cool – I actually really, really like the ending. We will spoil the ending on this one just because I think it's very good. Yeah. Um, so the mom, you know, she's like leading him through the cemetery – or he's leading his mom through the cemetery, and there's a tombstone that says, you know, has his name on it. And the dude just like lays in the ground and like tries to bury himself after he'd been shot by the cops several times because <laughs> he's not dying because he's not dead. You don't know what he is. Um, he'd, I wouldn't really call him a zombie because he's not like – craving human flesh he just needs the blood to like inject to keep himself alive and all you never really get a backstory on what really has happened i don't mind that uh with this one it didn't bother me at all i'm sure some people probably complained about well, what the hell was happening was like ah, for, the, for me this was suspending disbelief was perfectly fine for this one and i loved at the end how he was like trying like he was putting him trying to put himself out of his own misery which i thought right. was quite poignant at the end um but excellent film, even though the first half starts off kind of like a straight drama, really. Yeah, a little slow, man. I, yeah, you're I thinking think... you're getting a psychological drama. You're like, okay, we're going to deal with PTSD. That's what's about to happen right here, you know? And then they kind of weave their way through this little tale. So. 
Yeah, it, I thought it was pretty interesting because I kind of had a, a, a weird take of what like kind of brought him back or whatever. Um, because I don't know if you remember the, the you you kind of when he gets shot, you uh, you hear his mom his mom's voice calling out like you'll come back, Andy. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you know you got to you promise like you know you'll come back from the war, and it kind of does give that little respect. And then and then it kind of throughout the movie you kind of see that the mom's like trying to defend her son and the dad's like, you know, you know, we need to snap him out of this shit, you know, like, you know, what the fuck, you know, like you got to stop, you know, she's, she's the, the dad confronts the mom and she's just defending his weirdness, you know, and he's like, no, this isn't, this isn't right. You know? So the dad sees the shit that's kind of going on. He's, he's more into it. The mom's just blinded by her, 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 uh, her love, you know, her unconditional love for her son, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, and she, you know, she totally is, but, um, yeah, I, I do like the buildup though. You know what I mean? The buildup is really, really cool. Um, you know, and again, the ending was really good. So I don't want to give that away as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's, well, I already gave the ending away, so that's fine. Well, you know, but you, yeah. you know, like the ending ending, like, you know, where you said like kind of what happens, Yeah, you know, no, but it's very, very cool flick. Um, yeah, and and also, it, it was supposed to be a remake of it. In 2003, a couple guys bought the rights to it, and they optioned it for Eli Roth to actually direct it. Mm -hmm. uh, but nothing really ever came of it, and apparently Michael Douglas was attached to it at some point, um, and it all just kind of fell through in, like, 2010. Uh, but there's still a script out there for a remake of this. Yeah, that's crazy, man. I like the way he looked because, like, he was rotting. Like, his eyes got all white, and mm -hmm. his hand was rotting a little bit in it. And I don't... Like, I don't know if he was like it was like almost a mis mix mash between a vampire or a zombie. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah, it it, it was really it's the really unknown. <laughs> yeah, it was the unknown. He's just a monster, you know that that required some stuff. You know, he yeah. need, he needed some blood or or whatever it is to make him make him live. But um, great movie. I thought I thought his face looked really cool too. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of. Uh kind of unsettling dialogue exchanges between the family and him. Like it definitely like it, it just feels creepy. Like you're like, Ugh. it just feels fucking off the whole film. And I feel like they really kind of, I know it's a little slower on the beginning, but I felt like they really kind of set the tone really great for this early on in the film. And then in the, you know, late in the second and third act, it really kind of, I wouldn't say it amps up cause it's still a slow pace, but you start getting those little samplings of what's going on. So Really by the way, it. I want. By the way, I want his sunglasses. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I need those. But well, what do you? What do you? Those. What do you rate this bad boy? Man, I give this movie a solid four out of five. I really I agree. liked it. It's, I think it's, that, it is a solid four. The pacing was a little off for me in the beginning, like you said. But, yeah, but you know. like, yeah, like I said, I mean, that would be my one kind of knock on it a little bit. But it's not even a knock because, like I said, some of those dialogue exchanges are just creepy and weird. And I think the mom does a great job of playing her role. The dad's awesome. I think the casting across the board has done really well. And it definitely feels like a Bob Clark movie when you're watching it, especially with, like, the, you know, the killer's perspective, climbing in the truck type stuff like that. That you also see in Black Christmas. Uh, I definitely felt like a Bob Clark film, but yeah, solid four out of five. Uh, I'm surprised it took me so long to see this one. It's been on the radar for a while, so yeah, me too. I've always noticed the cover, so go go check it out, guys, where you can. Yeah. It's it's a yeah, really it's on cool Tubi flick. right now, so yeah, it's it a cool is. flick. Um, all right, guys, we're gonna go into my pick, uh, and it's going to be Satan's Triangle from 1975. Let's go ahead and listen to the trailer, and we'll be right back. The storm got worse. He was helplessly thrown about the cap. He tried to get out, but was continually thrown back. Fearing for his life, he tried to climb his way out. storm that jammed the door. That's when you heard him screaming for help.
All right, guys, that was the trailer for Satan's Triangle, the 1970s movie that I picked. And again, we didn't know. No, I don't. I didn't know. 70s, 70s. Anyways. Um, all right. So this was a made for television movie and I picked it because I like the, the, the saint, the name of it. I mean, how could you yeah. not like a Satan's triangle name? Yes. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's produced. It was produced by ABC on ABC and essentially at the end of the day, it's, it's about, um, the Bermuda triangle. <laughs> so, yeah, but yeah, they've redubbed it. Satan's triangle, Satan's triangle. And really what it is, is it's like these, Two helicopter pilots, you know, uh, Coast Guard pilots are responding to a SOS call at the sea. And, you know, and they kind of have really cool banter because one's like this. Kinda... Yeah, one's a total, like, seems like a take no shit old, like, shut ah, the fuck up. He was so cranky. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was Everything. cranky as fuck. <laughs> even talking to the, what are you, do? even talking to, like, the his, his when he's on his, you know, back to base he's a dick to them it's like ah it's like whoa this guy saw some action in world war one or two or whatever but then you have uh the other pilot who is uh played by kim novak who popularly is in um vertigo and humanoids from the deep yeah yeah she, yeah her big uh what got oh, her no, famous no, i think sorry was that vertigo. was doug mcclure doug mcclure was in humanoids yeah. from the deep. my bad no yeah she was in she's in vertigo so her big like um uh... Became more famous through Hitchcock's Vertigo, and then obviously she's done she's done a ton of other stuff. So this is actually actually a pretty good casting. We're getting Novak and McClure in on this thing at the time. Yeah, uh, really they were definitely casting. yeah yeah. So you they get this they get this uh, SOS call on the way as as you know you see Doug McClure's character just checking out chicks and the other guy's not fucking want anything to do with it. So they get an SOS call. Uh, he he lo- lowers uh, Doug McClure's character down to the ship and. He sees three dead bodies, which is really weird because there's one like on the mast as well, just hanging there, which yeah, I thought which, was really cool. Yeah, and you can kind of tell too. It's it's a, a, a minister, like you can see his collar, so it's a priest that is. Yeah, you know, you're like, oh, it's fuck. a priest. <laughs> they yeah. already killed a priest in the first four seconds of this movie. Yeah, they're already like dead, and then you know, Eva's there, or, which is Kim Novak's character, and you know, the pilot's trying to retrieve him, but the line breaks. Um. And those two fall into the ocean. They swim back to the boat. The pilot tells them, hey, I got to return. I'm running out of gas. They kick it on the boat overnight. And she starts telling them stories of the storm that kind of killed everyone else off, right? Yeah. And which start- This is actually – uh, when she starts telling the story, I don't know if you noticed this. I had to rewind and check it. I was like, wait, what is happening? So she was Kim Novak's character is like talking about it. So she has like a flashback, but she walks into the frame saying the words that she's saying to Doug McClure's character, and then it cuts right into like the, the – fr- Yeah. The, to the flashback, like right. seamlessly. It's like, oh, wait, what? It was yeah. weird. It was yeah. cool though. It was very cool. I, it was, yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it was cool. It was a good effect to try to take yeah. him back into the story. So right, yeah. she, she just starts talking about how – you know the weird events and how they found the priest drifting in the ocean – he was a survivor of another de- disaster. Uh, you know, she talk she talks about you know another storm that ca- the storm that caused all the deaths on the boat, and you know, you, you get these guys like fishing. You know, back in the story, so they're just dicks to each other. So not these are all thoughts, right? Like these are not thoughts, but these are all stories that she's telling to Doug Doug McClure. So it's like a lot of flashbacky type of stuff going yeah. on, right? Yeah. So um, she. She's attributing all these things to supernatural causes, but he's like, hey, man, there's an explanation for everything. This isn't what you think it is, you know, more science-based. Yeah, so he know. starts mansplaining her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, you know, it, it it's just – it kind of goes from there where she just – they go back and forth. They have sex after he's comforting her in typical 70s fashion, right? Right, yeah. He pulled the Tom Atkins move on her, didn't he? He did, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but, um, you know, because there, she she does tell a part about a, a, a guy who appeared floating in the air. Which is know, fucking cool where they walk yeah. down to the cabin and the dude's just like hanging in midair suspended. It looks cool as shit. It's actually really creepy. They did a good job with that effect. Sure. Totally. Totally. And – it was a good effect, man, but then you get kind of like 
the priest is in there and he's talking about all kinds of weird stuff and it, it takes a weird turn when <clears throat> they tell him what they found on the ship. It's not what was reported, basically. Right. And and the person hanging on the mast was a woman and not the priest, even though we saw the priest. Right. That was and, really weird. Yeah. So then you're like, oh, wait, what is Novak's – what is Eva? I guess that's her character name. Like, what is she – what? What is she – what? Is she making all this shit up? Like, you get really kind of confused at this point of what's happening? Yeah, like – well, and then what happens is, you know, during all this, she kind of – the priest – I, I don't know. It's weird. Like she kind of has an evil grin to, into the priest and I don't know. It's weird. This is where I get lost. Like you said, um, it, the, the priest turns to Pagnini, you know, the character Pagnini yeah, yeah. in the movie, like yeah. it tries to beg for salvation but the pilot like rejects the devil. They, they, this is the devil at this point because you could tell right. she's kind of the devil. I don't know. Or the devil weird. has possessed her, and then you know, and then and then pushed him out of the helicopter, and that's where the mass thing happens. It gets a little convoluted at the end for me. Yeah. Um, but the helicopter does crash into the sea without doing saying anything to the helicopter pilot from the beginning. He just push pushes him out of the sea or out of the helicopter. And the priest does survive, and he does float away, and then we see Haig come back to life. And then what <clears throat> what happens is basically when a ship kind of rescues him, he looks up, and he's got, like, this evil grin on his face. Like, and that's kind of oh, how it ends. Oh, fuck. Oh, fuck. So it's like the devil. It seems like the devil jumping back and forth through everybody. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's, like a, it's almost like a little possession film, really. I mean – Especially when, you know, it gets to the end and you're pretty convinced that Eva is, you know, at least possessed by the devil. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he – and he so at the end, like, he's kind of, like, doing the devilish grin himself and is like, ugh, you know what I mean? Like, which is kind of a creepy little face floating in the ocean. And it, it, it just kind of ends like that, which, which is cool. But obviously I, I love it when movies like this – can just end like that without right. requiring some kind of sequel. You know? Absolutely, yeah. That's the beauty of some of these old uh, made-for-TV movies. Yeah, I don't need they're a one sequel. and done. Yeah, they're one and done. Yeah, yeah, they're one and doneers. Which this movie's not very long, and you could tell like it was. Yeah, you know. yeah. By the time you edit in commercials, it's two hours. But it's if without commercials, it's another you know, seventy-four <laughs> minutes. So yeah, there we you, go. Yeah, it was what seventy-four minutes. Yep, yeah, seventy-four. Total. Yeah, so it wasn't. It, it was it, – to be honest with you, man, it was a little slow for me. It was definitely it more psychological. For it, sure. It, it is it, slower. Yeah, it is a drama. It is a, a, a mystery movie, but there's also some horror in it. Yeah. And, you know, I could I could see where, you know, it would be if definitely effective for 1975, right? Like, Absolutely, yeah. Where, we ha where people's – where mankind's attention was really <laughs> – more on yeah. point you know the things yeah. we could you know but uh you know I, I mean for what it was i enjoyed it i i'm gonna go middle of the road here with a two and a half out of five yeah. just because i i it just kind of the dialogue was just it was just too much it, it, it was a lot of talking yeah yeah i'm right around in there two and a half maybe a three uh that sometimes i did uh i did like novak a lot in it i thought she did great and that would, would be the saving grace for me that would potentially bump it up to a three but right there i think it's better than a lot of the made for tv movies but it's not up there with some of the other really great ones you know like town that dreaded sundown or bad ronald or something you know stuff like that that went straight to tv that are really really good films um you know, it was okay. It was worth a watch. I enjoyed it well enough. Luckily, it's not too long, so it fit the bill. No. And well, I appreciated it that it was, um, I guess, before this, most of anything referring to like the Bermuda Triangle, which is kind of like, sure. ooh, planes crash and, and and you know your instruments mysteriously lose control, so they lose boats and stuff all the time. It was it's cool to see them actually take like, oh, this is actually.